Hello, here's a, uh, a video about um, understanding some structural behaviour and uh, it's an exam question that we use at our university and uh, it's, a, it's a kind of dog-legged cantilever with a single point load at one end and it's fixed at uh, the opposite end and the question says which of these bending moment diagrams uh, matches the actual uh, bending moment diagram for this structure. Uh, in running through this, hopefully we'll learn a couple of uh, things along the way. So if you can just remember that it's a dog-legged uh, structure. Okay. Uh, the way I'm going to approach this is by uh, starting off by looking at the first part of the dog leg on its own, treating it as if it's on its own. Then I'll look at the second part on its own, and then I'll look at the whole thing together. Uh, by breaking it down into smaller steps, hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to follow. So, here's a... Um, Here is that, uh, that first step, which is just this part of the structure, nothing else. And here's the force being applied to it. Now when that force is applied to it, what's going to happen is that that structure is going to rotate a little bit. Okay. Now you might be able to tell, or you might just intuitively know, that there will be tension forming along this side. Right. So I'm going to draw that onto a little sketch so that we can remember that and you can see that the whole thing is deflected away from the load. Well, you might expect that to happen, but nevertheless, it's good to, good to remember these things. So I'm going to draw on what I think would be the deflected shape. So it's going to run something like this. It's not going to deflect very much and then we'll have tension on this face it's being cranked away from us and that face is going to go into tension. Right, so how are we going to work out the bending moment diagram for this? Well you may remember that a bending moment diagram is a force times a distance. Uh, there we go, so I've actually written that down just to remind you, force times distance. I know it sounds obvious. Let's just say that we had a force P here and we split this length into three equal parts. We'll say it's just one meter each part. It really doesn't matter. At the very end, the distance, the force times the distance, the distance of the force is zero, so the bending moment is going to be zero. One metre away, the distance of the force is one metre, so the bending moment is going to be force P times one, so it's going to be P. One P. If I now go two metres away, the distance is two, therefore the bending moment is going to be P times two, so it's going to be two P. Then we get right down to the end, it's going to be 3 times P, so it's going to be 3P. Okay, you might be able to tell, if I join the dots here, that this is the shape of the bending moment diagram, and it's simply a triangle. Okay, that's as simple as that. So uh, if that came as a bit of a surprise to you, you might want to check out a different video uh, that I have on YouTube. Unfortunately, I've only got a cantilever beam with a UDL, but if you search for bending moments in beams and a cantilever beam, it'll give you an idea as to the ideas behind this. Okay, let's move on to the next part of the, uh, of the job. So now, I'm going to look at this part of the beam. Great. So it's an L shape and it's kind of sticking out and it's, it's as if it's fixed at that point where it joins in with the rest of the uh, structure. And here it is. And there we are. I've created this little L shaped structure and there's my force that's going to be applied to it. So I apply my force to this and lo and behold the whole thing bends over a little bit like that. Now we already knew that this part was in tension but we can see tension cracks appearing on this side and in fact the whole of this this side of the the vertical arm is going to be in tension okay that's good to know so i'm going to do my best now to draw out that part of the uh, structure so i'll draw the deflected shape mm -hmm. it's always it's always incredibly difficult to draw a deflected shape so that you can see them but they're not just ridiculous kind of toontown versions of deflected shapes so uh, i'll give it my best shot Okay, and then because this is a right angle, it has to stay as a right angle. Oops, that's not brilliant, but that's about it. 
So that stays as a right angle and this stays as a right angle. Great. And I know that I have tension all the way along here. Oh, I forgot to say earlier, why am I interested in finding out where tension is? Because that's why I draw the bending moment diagram. Now I've already got the bending moment diagram for this part of the structure. This is kind of triangle, it just goes straight to the tip. This is the bit that I'm interested in now, the vertical leg. So, the bending moment is a force times a distance. Ah, but is that so? I'm just going to give that definition a, a slightly uh, a longer wording now. I'm going to say that the bending moment is the force times the shortest distance to the line of action of the force. Okay, right. Now, where is the line of action of this force? Well, this force has a line of action which starts at the far end of the universe and it goes right through the force and it carries on right to the opposite end of the universe. Well, out of shot at least. Great. So this is the line of action of the force. So if I want to find out what the bending moment is at this point, I multiply the force P times the distance, the shortest distance, to the line of action of the force, which is 3. So it's going to be 3P. Now, as before, I'm going to draw the bending moment diagram on the tension face of this member. So I'll start off at that point, and it's 3P. Just like that's 3P. Now if I move, say that this is 3 metres length, I really don't mind. And at this point, what's the bending moment? Well, it's the force, P times the distance to the line of action of the force from the point around which I'm taking the moments. And again, that stayed as 3, so it's going to be 3p. Let's move along. What's the bending moment at this point? Well, nothing's changing. It's staying at 3p. And the same again at the end, 3p. So the bending moment along this stretch of the, of the structure is actually just a rectangle. Okay, well we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere slowly. So now let's look at the final stage. Right. So we've looked at a single leg, a crank, and now we're going for the two leg, the, the, the double crank, shall we say. And here it is. So there's the double crank. Let's arrange it there. Okay, and we'll get my force. There's the force, and now I'm going to apply it. And as I apply it, the whole thing is just going to, oh, it's just going to rotate slightly like this as the force acts, whoops, stretch my finger, and the force acts on the structure. And as it moves the structure around, it's creating tension along this face here. Okay, that's good to know, and that helps me draw my deflected shape. So now I'm going to budge this out of the way and draw my deflected shape. Mm -hmm. I said it wasn't easy before, it's no easier for this. Right, so let's see if I can draw a deflected shape. So that's coming out there at 90 degrees. And that's coming out there at 90 degrees. Okay, it doesn't look too insane, that. Everything that started at 90 degrees remains at 90 degrees. Mm, not too good, that. Never mind. Draw on the force. There it is. I'm calling that and then I'm going to start drawing on the bending moment diagram here we go mm -hmm. that seems to be the same there bending moments at corners tend to remain the same and now I'm going to have a look at this fella here again I'm interested in the bending moment being the distance to the line of action of the force there's the line of action of this force just jotted it on Right, if this was 3, that's 3, let's say this is 3 as well, it doesn't have to be, then the bending moment at this point is going to be P times 3. It's going to be the same, same in magnitude, but I had tension along here earlier. I can see that this is the deflected shape and it's bending it around that way, so I'm going to have tension along this face. So I'm going to draw my bending moment along this face here. Bending moment at this point is going to be exactly the same as along the beam. The leg here will be the same as this leg, so it's going to be 3p. Now, if 
I split this into three portions, that distance there is 3 times p, so I'll call that 3p. Next point along the, the leg, ah, it's now 4 away. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's now 4p. There we go, 4p. So I move another metre away, it's going to be another metre further away. So it's, in this case, it's going to be 5p. And finally, as I move further away again, going to be just a little bit further away which is 6, so 6 times p, so it's going to be 6p. Okay, so I can now draw on the vending moment shape there. Right, that seems like an awful lot of effort to come up with a vending moment diagram. Let's see if we can work out which is the correct answer. So, we know that the vending moment diagram starts off on the bottom face. We're okay, we can rule out these two. So now we've just because they've been drawn on the wrong face of this last leg. Now we've just got to choose between these, and clearly it's going to be answer D. Okay, that's great. It's worth bearing in mind a couple of points that I made during this, and one is that uh, when you draw deflected shapes, uh, right angles stay at right angles, and then finally, when you draw bending moment diagrams, you draw them on the tension face of the beam. At least you do in the UK. Now other countries have different conventions and it is just a convention. So that's how I solved question one of my university's uh, exam asking for a bending moment diagram for this structure. Great, hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.